Hello, everybody, and welcome back into another season preview show here at the Hockey Writers Podcast. As you can see, with we're doing a duo on this one. I we've got a couple teams. We're gonna well, one team we're gonna be covering today. We're gonna cover the Winnipeg Jets. Uh, one of the, uh, I mean, they were they struggled last year, didn't make the playoffs. I uh, but we're gonna cover them and see if uh, they can have a better season this year. Uh, of, of course, joined in by my co-host Kyle Knopp. Uh, thanks, Kyle, for. Uh, joining again the podcast and uh, like I say we're a duo today um, but uh, we're going to cover take a look at the Winnipeg Jets so let's get started uh, with the forwards like we always do here and start with some of the new additions which they really didn't have much on the mm-hmm. forward side only Sam Gagne who I mean I'll ask you about him Kyle because uh, he was with the Red Wings uh, last season so I uh, what do you think about him joining the Jets and uh, what type of impact do you think he'll have on the team this year yeah, I mean, I I love his signing with the Jets here. Uh, you know, my he- hope had been that he would come back with the Red Wings because of the veteran presence that he brings. And this is a young Jets team. I mean, if you yeah. look at their roster, uh, their only other older forward uh, is Blake Wheeler, who's 36, and then everyone else is under uh, 30. So, uh, Gagne brings a lot of experience and a lot of professionalism to the Winnipeg Jets and is kind of a, another coach's voice on the ice during the time of the game. So I like him there. I think he's going to be a huge addition to this team. Uh, and, you know, they they just barely missed the playoffs last year. So I think they are bringing Gagne in to kind of be that veteran presence to push them over the edge and get them back into it this year. Yeah, I mean, uh again a later signing I, I believe it was just a few weeks ago that he signed yeah. with, the, with the Jets so um kind of maybe weighing his options see where he wanted to go but uh yeah he's probably going to serve a similar role like he did in Detroit uh more that veteran guy um I think he pre- he killed penalties last year yeah yeah so, he's a good penalty killer as well yeah and that's not something that he was known for earlier in his career he's more of an offensive power mm-hmm. play guy and um more that but you know towards the end you know what he's become now is a really solid two-way player and I have experience with him in Vancouver too he was in Vancouver for I mean signed as more of an offensive presence but uh, <laughs> never never became that but you know he's he's turned into a really good um solid guy that I think will be able to help this Jets team too and uh I was actually hoping he was going gonna go back to the Jets and not the Jet the Red Wings as well yeah. because I think he really fit uh yeah. on that team too so uh, we'll see how he does with the Jets, and uh, I think he's probably going to be a pretty good addition into that, like middle six, maybe. I mean, he can, he can still play on the power play as well, so um, see what he does. Yeah, there's a good chance he could probably end up in that uh, third line, fourth line, center role, uh, along with maybe that power play too, and that and that penalty kill as well. So uh, he he's going to find a uh, way to get ice time in that system, but. Uh, yeah, he's so versatile that he's going to be a huge help out, out there. Yeah, and uh, I think he's probably played some kind of like, like Andrew Kopp type uh, yeah. role, right, uh, doing all that. And um, one thing he can do, too, is uh, is the shootout. Uh, he's really yeah, good at yeah. the shootout, too. So. <laughs> that is true. Uh, I mean, so that'll help, he'll help in that uh, aspect as well. Well, let, let's talk about a few storylines in this forward group. And uh, there's a couple things that have kind of gone come through. Um, one, uh, Blake Wheeler was stripped mm-hmm. of the captaincy. I mean, this was a big story. Yeah. Uh, you know, their leadership was questioned at times last season. Um, you know, it's never a good thing uh, to have the captaincy stripped away from you. And it sounds like they're not going to go with the captain this year. Um, what are your thoughts on, on that? I, I'm not sure I... I don't know. I'm not sure I like it. I, it's never a good thing to have a captaincy strip, but I mean, they must have their reasons. Yeah. It it's, it's a tough situation, right? Because there's obviously something that was going on behind the scenes, uh, whether it was a team issue, a uh, coach's issue, you know, them butting heads or just, you know, a change of direction, but to strip his captaincy, and, and, you know, normally if they're bringing in a new coach, which we'll talk about in a minute, you know, he would probably uh, appoint a new captain after a few you know weeks into the season or after he gets to be with the team a bit. But they kind of just said, you know, we're 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 taking it away from Wheeler and we're not going to replace it with anyone. Yeah. So 
it's a very strange situation and you gotta, you gotta think that it's going to impact Wheeler, uh, you know, heading into the season and way pretty heavy on him. So it's going to be a, a storyline within a storyline. It could be an issue where uh, the jets are causing drama where they don't need to, you know, going into a, a very important season for this franchise. Yeah. And I mean, they must, like I say, they must have their reasons for it. Like we don't know yeah. what's happening through the locker room and uh, you know, Rick bonus who took over as the coach now, and maybe he didn't like how the room was and, yeah. uh, you know, you want to reset it. So, I mean, we'll see what happens. I mean, like you say, it's, I'm not sure how Wheeler's going to going to be affected by it. I mean, this is a guy that's been captain for a few years and uh, to have it not be, I mean, I don't know if he's going to have a letter at all. If he's going to have an A, um, I would assume he would probably still keep that, but you yeah. don't know. Right. Um, yeah, it's going to be tough. So we'll just have to see. <laughs> just have to wait and see how that all goes. Um, Kyle, do you have anything else you kind of want to talk about the Jets in this forward group that uh, we want to highlight? Yeah, so I want to talk about uh, Mark Shifley a little bit. And, uh, he's, you know, he's coming off an injury, but he's also kind of expressed some, uh, you know, downtrodden feelings toward the uh, Winnipeg Jets as well. I believe he had that end of the season press conference in which he just kind of, you know, made it seem like he, he, you know, whether the room didn't have it in him or he didn't have it in him, but the, the luster for winning just didn't seem to be there. Um, And, you know, you could feel the frustration. There was speculation. He might be traded this off season. So, uh, you know, I'm kind of looking at that as a big storyline, not only through training camp, but coming into the start of season and how uh, this forward group gels, when he comes back and, and, you know, so the comments he kind of stated along with Wheeler's kind of demotion, it just, it feels like there's a lot of animosity in that locker room. So those are, you know, the two big players, I think that are the driving forces behind it. So those are kind of the two big storylines I'm looking at. Yeah. Though, I mean, Mark Shifley is, again, he's one of the faces of the franchise and uh, you know, for them to make the playoffs again, and he's going to have to be a big part of it and uh, yeah. the leadership group and all that. So, um, you know, I'm sure the thing is with Wheeler and him, they've been together probably since he came to the NHL too. So they're, they're, they have a pretty strong relationship. So I'm sure he not, doesn't like that. He was, you know, Wheeler was taking the captaincy away. So right. um, again, that's two big players on your team. And uh, another one, just before we move on to talk about the matchup of in the central here, but one guy I'm kind of looking at is Nikolai Ehlers. Uh, yeah season because he's going to be thrust into a bigger role I think uh this year uh, without cop uh being there and uh you know of course Kyle Connors didn't always score so I mean don't really yeah. have to about it. he's coming just gonna keep scoring so um but yeah I think Ehlers is as up for a really good season so and um, we'll talk about our breakout stars later but uh, I keep an eye on him too all right well That's- let's talk about our how we usually do this too is the comparing in the division. Uh, how do you think this forward group will match up in the central? I mean, I guess we've, we've covered a few of the central division teams. Uh, where do you think this group kind of. Yeah, I would say, you know, they're kind of toward that, uh, the, the higher level of the middle of the pack. Um, you know, so they're, they, they have a lot of firepower, you know, Kyle Connor, uh, Blake Wheeler and Mike, Sh- Mark Shifley, when they're on, uh, Pierre Luc Dubois can score. Oh, yeah. Sam Gagne uh, is a player that we just talked about that was known for his offensive prowess. Uh, you know, they have a couple of young guys that we're going to talk about that could bring a lot of firepower uh, to this team too. So they can score. Um, so I will give them that, but the, 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 their biggest thing is is they need to have possession time, uh, and they just didn't really seem to have that a lot last year. They didn't really seem to control the zone as much. Uh, they seem to score a lot of their goals off of the rush, um, and so if they can control the play in the other end, then they can kind of take off a lot of pressure from their goaltending and defense, which we'll talk about. So that's why I'm kind of ranking them only toward the uh, middle middle high of the pack. Yeah, I, I can agree with that too. I mean, the thing is, they do one thing they do have is some high end scorers. I oh, mean, yeah. Like I say, Ehlers, uh, Connor, uh, Shifley, Wheeler, they can all score. Yeah. So they have a pretty good, he- you know, top heavy offense. But 
Uh, it's their young guys, I think, that's going to make the difference this year. If they are going to make the playoffs, that's where it's going to come from. You know, guys, um, like you say, Gagne is another guy that actually could could have some good uh, production uh, being in that bottom part of the lineup. And guys like Cole Perfetti, I mean, he, yep. he's going to be a really high-end uh, young prospect coming in. I had a pretty good season last year with the Jets. So um, he's going to probably want to take a step forward. So it's going to be interesting to see how this group kind of gels uh, together with a new coach too. So um, we'll see how all the system goes. Yeah. Well, let's shift to the defense, which has been a problem the last two seasons. They've tried, they've tried to fix it with with new additions, and uh, they brought in a few, a couple guys last year. You know, uh, Brendan Dillon came in. Uh, you had uh, Nate Schmidt come in as well, and yeah. um, you know, Schmidt had a much better season than he had in Vancouver, uh, in Winnipeg. And um, what do you think about this group? I mean, biggest storyline I'm looking at is just how they kind of work together under a new coach. I think because they're not bringing anyone new. I mean, there's no one new here. How do you think this is all going to work out? Yeah. uh, You know, like you said, it's going to come down to how they can respond to the new coach in front of them. And again, I kind of alluded to it just a, a minute ago in my answer about the forwards, but if the forwards are continuing to play run and gun style hockey and, and off the rush hockey, uh, then that means that the defense are also facing rushes and they're also getting the sustained uh, zone pressure against. So um I feel like they got kind of overwhelmed last year, whether it was through exhaustion in their own end or just uh, weren't quite the defensive stalwarts that they thought they were. I mean, this, this uh, defensive core can put up some points, you know, Morrissey put up uh, quite a few points. Uh, Ponick had, um, I would think like 34 points or something, you know, they, um, uh, you know, DeMello didn't put up a whole lot of points, but can throw in a lot of assists. Like they have guys that can, can move the puck in the offensive zone or, or start the play. But what they need are guys that can shut down other teams forwards. Yeah. So my biggest storyline, like you said, is, is going to be, can they continue to shut the other team's offense down? And then can they keep the play out of their defensive zone? So um, again, that will come down to offense, keeping more zone pressure on, but the defense needs to clear up their zone and, and be able to get passes out and, I believe the Jets were one of the or the team that let in one of them or not let in, sorry, allowed uh, the most shots against or yeah. one of the t- most shots against. So, uh, you know, they need to be able to close gaps in the defensive zone and be able to, you know, uh, stop shots from getting through. Yeah, and that that's an understatement. The last couple of seasons, they've been that problem. High danger chances, one of the highest uh, allowed and shots against. Um, the only reason they haven't uh, they haven't uh, been destroyed every game was <laughs> guy we'll talk about now is Connor Hellebuck. <laughs> yeah. The only reason uh, they haven't been shelled every, every year is because of this guy. And yeah. he was a little underwhelming last season. Um, you look at his numbers. I mean, they were bad, but they weren't very good. So, I mean, <laughs> for a guy that's, that's been in the conversation, the Vesna quite a few times, I, what does he have to do this season? I don't know. I think you just do the same thing. I mean, if the defense plays better in front of them, they've got a really good chance. Absolutely. If the defense plays better in front of them, by all means, he has a better chance. But one thing that he needs to do is allow his backup to play a few more games. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> He played 66 games last year. Eric Comrie played 16, started yeah. 16, was in 19. I mean, that's insane. And Comrie – Posted pretty good numbers. He was 10, five and one with a nine twenty save percentage and a two, five, eight goals against average. Whereas, you know, Hellebuck in his 66 games was a nine, 10 save percentage and a two, nine, seven. So, you know, Comrie played well when he had to, uh, uh, but the jets just relied too heavily on Hellebuck and he yeah. needs to, uh, you know, be able to have a few more nights off. And I think they're allowing that by bringing in David Riddick, who I believe we'll talk about a little bit more in a minute, but um, you know, if, if, if Hellebuck can get down closer to that, you know, 45 game range uh, and Hellebuck can, you know, come in and play like 35 uh, games or so, then, or sorry, not Hellebuck, Riddick can play 35 games or so, uh, then that's going to allow Hellebuck a chance to have a lot more nights where he can be at the top of his game. 
yeah, I mean, we've talked about quite a bit about starting goaltenders playing too much. And like uh, Vasilevsky was the one we talked about earlier. And, uh, you know, this guy is Hellebuck's at that same level. I think he's at that, yeah. you know, height in that he can be a Vasilevsky uh, for a team. And we've yeah. seen it uh, multiple times. It's just he's always faced with so many shots and so many high danger chances. And he still puts up pretty good numbers. That's, so, that's, yeah, that's like, the other thing is uh, the Jets allowing the most shots, you know, uh, per game. And then he's probably playing the most or second most games in a season. You know, I would say Vasilevsky probably is was yeah. close to 60 plus games. Uh, but I mean, that's just insane, you know? So not only are you working more than every other goalie in the league, you're seeing more shots a night than every other goalie yeah. in the league. So <laughs> it's just a double whammy in that regard. Yeah. And, you know, moving to David Reddick, uh, I'm not sure he's the, he's the guy that you're wanting to really pin your hopes on been playing 35 games and making the playoffs because he only played 17 last season behind sorrows mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, there's another goalie that plays a lot. True. But, uh, I mean, his record wasn't bad, 6-3-4, and four, uh, but his goal is going to average, 3.57. Uh, not really good. I uh, ate 86 save percentage. Again, not really good. Um, I mean, he's he's shown in his career that he's been, a you know, can be a pretty good goaltender. I mean, he was in Calgary. He was the starter there. Yeah. I, you know, um, but personally, I, I mean, nothing against Riddick, but I think the – the Jets would have been better off trying to just re-signing Comrie because I think, you know, he's in Buffalo now, but you know, I, I'm not, I'm not sure they made the right decision uh, moving on from. Him. Yeah. And I, I don't know, you know, if it's because Comrie is younger too, right? Yeah. Comrie's only 26 and Riddick is 30. So uh, I don't know what they were thinking going that way, but I believe the Jets sign the Riddick of Calgary um, yeah. is what they're hoping for. Not of the Toronto or Nashville the last couple yeah. of years, but of the Calgary where he's putting up, you know, uh, 261, 297, 290, say percentages, you know, 911, 907, 904. Uh, or sorry, those would be the say percentages. Goals against would be the, the twos. Um, but, you know, putting together good numbers. And I think that's what they're looking at hoping to get. Cause in, you know, Calgary, he was playing about 40 to 50 games a year yeah. uh, and getting more. Whereas, like you said, the last couple of years he has, you know, in the last uh, two years, he's seen 21 games. So they need to rely on him and hope that he's going to be the goalie that as he sees more shots, he, he plays better. And I think that's kind of what they're hoping for. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, the thing is, he was apparently the goaltender of the future, right? You yeah. know, that type of a guy for, for Calgary. And then all of a sudden they're like, well, we're going to move on, uh, you know, and uh, he hasn't really rebounded since then. So we'll see. I mean, he's, he's 30, he's not really old, but he's not really right. young. So I think he can <laughs> be a good backup. He just has to be able to be consistent and mm-hmm bonus confidence that he can put him in and say, okay, we're not going to have to put Hellebuck in halfway through the game because you're getting shelled. So, yeah. um, but it'll be up to the defenses. Like we've always said, it's better to play in front, better in front of the goaltender <laughs> and you'll have a better chance. It so it uh, helps. <laughs> we'll, we'll have to see if it all kind of falls into place and uh, he can play well um, behind Hellebuck. All right. Well, that's the goaltending. Uh, you know, it's going to be tough, I think, with Winnipeg in general this year because the Central, I mean, yeah, there's not the strongest division. That You got Arizona in there. You got Chicago, the teams that are probably not going to put up a bunch of a fight. But you're still dealing with the Colorado, you know, Colorado Avalanche quite a few times. You're still dealing uh, with with the Dallas Stars. We'll, we're going to talk about them in the next episode. So mm-hmm. they've got some tough competition. What do you think this whole kind of team kind of matches up in this division? Uh, so yeah, the team as a whole, uh, is kind of tough because on paper, right. They should be high fire, sorry, high firepower offense. And one of the best goaltenders in the division, if not one of the best in the league, when he's on his game, uh, you know, so you should have them ranked toward the top of, of the central. However, uh, you know, they were one of the teams on the outside looking in last year. So, it really depends on 
how they're going to gel together. And I think that's, like we said, the biggest storyline heading into this preseason and into the start of the season is how are they going to come together? How are the the leaders on the team, whether they yeah. are current leaders or were leaders, how are they going to step up? How are they going to react? Um, you know, what kind of message are they going to send to the young kids coming up through the organization? Uh, what kind of message are they going to send to their teammates in the locker room night in and night out? Uh, so there's so many question marks surrounding this team, but I got to say, you know, don't count them out. I would no. put them, I would still put them probably in the top four, three, four of the, yeah. of the central. So I, you know, I would say don't count them out at all. No. And that's the thing when you have such, such a high firepower at the top, I mean, you know, if they can put it together, they've got a good team. Uh, yeah. They do. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how, uh, the guy we'll talk about next, it does. Rick Bonus uh, taking over behind the bench. Uh, Paul Maurice gone mid-season last year. Uh, Dave Lowry took over at a okay end of the season, but uh, again gone. And now Rick Bonus is in charge. So, what do you think he'll kind of bring to the team? Because honey, we're doing the Dallas Stars next. He just came from that team, yeah. so I uh, had some good success there. Made to the Stanley Cup final. I uh, you know. What do you think he'll he'll be able to do to this team? I mean, uh, seems like he's already he's already made a mark by uh, stripping the captaincy. So, uh, what do you think? <laughs> yeah, it's it's very weird situation all the way around, right? Like uh, Lowry basically saying like I. I can't take this team any yeah. further. Like this is the best I've done. It's December, December of a new season. And he's like giving yeah. up on the team. <laughs> so he steps down. Lowry comes in, does an okay job, but you know, there's some, like we said, there was some issues in the locker room. Uh, there's some, you know, behind the scenes with Shifley going on toward the end yeah. of the season, the team didn't make the playoffs. Uh, you know, it was just a lot of kind of, weird unsettled business it seemed like and then in the offseason they went and picked up bonus who had just been released from dallas after taking them to a stanley cup final and then kind of starting off a bit slow yeah. the next season so it was like you're kind of trading one for the other uh but i liked what bonus did in dallas i think he took a kind of a young ragtag group of guys which is very similar to what the yeah. jets have right now and he led them to a stanley cup appearance uh, so, you know, you got to say it, with that in mind, there's a lot of hope here. Um, I think he could be really good in, uh, Winnipeg, but the, again, the crazy thing was everyone thought Winnipeg was getting, uh, Barry Trot or uh, not Trotz. Um, oh, uh, the other guy that lives there. That's, uh, just was, um, oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> who is the guy that was supposed to go to, uh, Winnipeg to coach there and they offered him free beer for life. And, uh, Oh my! Oh, I can't remember now. <laughs> oh my gosh! Not Trots. Uh, was it Boudreau? Uh, Boost Boudreau? It might have been. It, it may have been. Uh, all right. Anyway, I apologize, everyone <laughs> at home. But they were all they're expecting to have another coach come in the season, and yeah. man, that fell through, and now they have a bonus. So just so so many little 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 pieces of drama just stacked on top of each other, and uh, so you know, my expectations are he has his year cut out for him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll yeah. just leave it at that. It, it, it's, it's going to be tough. I mean, the thing is, is like, there's been positive stuff kind of coming out of training of how the stuff he's going to change and uh, things like that. So uh, we'll have to see. And that's all, that's yeah. all we can look at is if this team is going to be able to adjust um, to his system and uh, if that locker room can kind of come together because I think that's the biggest issue. If the locker room can can get back to being a cohesive group, then I think they have something. So it, it was Barry Trotz. This Barry okay. Trotz. I it thought was so. I was like, okay, yeah. I I psyched myself out as I was <laughs> saying that. So I apologize. I was on the right track and I just took myself off. So yeah, Barry Trotz. Barry Trotz. And then I and I threw you for a loop because you're like, what is he talking like, about? Wait. So. <laughs> No, yeah, I remember that because uh, Trotz was saying that uh, he wants to take a year off, yeah, and uh, see if he, you know, maybe reset or stuff. So, yeah, um, yeah. But, I mean, Bonus is a is a good coach. I, I think he's I like going to be. Yeah. I think he's going to be able to do something good here because, um, again, more expensive. Seems like always connects to the Canucks. It's a lot of the time. Bonus was the assistant coach uh, in Vancouver during yeah. the whole run of success. Um, 
with Vigneault and that. So it ran the defense. So, I mean, and their defense is pretty good throughout those years. So um, if he can get a good system, I think defensively, if they can get a good system defensively, I think they're going to be a really good team because I think that was their weakness of the last few seasons because they can score goals. Yeah. It's the defensive side. So um, we'll have to see. All right, let's get to our quick fire round here and uh, shoot a bunch of questions through here. Um, you know, we'll go back and forth uh, and and just ask each other questions here. So um, <laughs> start with you, Kyle. Uh, pick one or two breakout stars for, for the Jets this year. Uh, I'm going to go Cole Perfe- Perfetti. Um, I think he's going to have a real big season uh, with the Jets, and I'm really looking forward to seeing him uh, with that big club the full season. Hmm. All right. Uh, one player that needs a bounce back from last season, Matt. Well, I'm going to go with, uh, I, I want to say it's, I, I'm going to say the duo of Shifley and Wheeler, even though their point totals were good. I think they needed bounce back character wise and in like the leadership part, because I think that was the thing they kind of struggle with throughout the season. So not bounce back in points or bounce back yep. in uh, locker room type, uh, type stuff. I, I love that. I love that uh, call out. All right. Uh, one player that could be an X factor this season. It's got to be Hellebuck. Got to be Hellebuck. He needs to yeah. have a little bit better of a season. And, you know, if, if he can get a little more rest and put the numbers up, he's going to lead them to, you know, the playoffs again. Mm-hmm. I agree. All right. One rookie or prospect that could surprise and make the roster out of training camp. That's a tough one. I mean, there's, they don't really. <laughs> To me, they, I don't really they, have a lot of. They didn't lose any positioning guys. Yeah, really. I mean, I don't really have a lot of prospects. That I think are ready to kind of, no. to kind of come in. So I'm, I'm gonna, uh, I'm just gonna go in the easy one and just say it's it's Perfetti because uh, he didn't have a full <laughs> season. Yeah, kind of up and down. So I, uh, I'll say Perfetti. I think he's gonna be surprised that you know. I'm not, there's no one coming to mind right now that's really a high end. I mean, I don't see Brad Lambert uh, no. doing anything. I don't see uh, Rutger McGrady surprising enough. I mean, these two guys were just drafted, so um, I haven't really heard anything to be them being being strong in training camp. I mean, Lambert had a good uh, young star, so yeah. I mean, low key maybe Brad Lambert. I mean, it'd be really <laughs> great for him if uh, if he would make the team, but. I don't see it, but yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I can agree with that. All right. Uh, what other players should fans be watching? We have not mentioned on the show yet. All right. So I'm going to go with two. One we kind of mentioned, uh, but they players their fans need to be keeping their eye on Pierre-Luc Dubois this season. Um, I think he's primed to have a pretty big year and, and he was kind of quiet, uh, you know, quieter season last year, but I think he's a guy that really could uh, break out as well this year. And then the other guy in the back end that fans need to keep an eye on is Logan Stanley. Uh, he's been hot and cold. Um, I think personally, he's a little on the overrated side, uh, so, you know, if he can have a big year this year and really cement himself in as, as, you know, being a big piece of this team, I think that's a player fans need to look out for. All right. Uh, oh, sorry. Pull back up. Who will lead the team in scoring in forwards, Matt? Oh, I'm a, I'm saying Nikolai Ehlers on this one. I really think he's going to have a breakout. If I if you ask me that question, breakout star, I think Ehlers is going to have a really good season this year. Yeah, I think you're right. And on defense, oh, I have to be Morrissey. I, I don't <laughs> see anyone else kind of unless Nate Schmidt kind of returns to his forty point self. I, I yeah yeah, Morrissey's really their only like true scoring defenseman. Yeah. All right. I, Probably mentioned him. I think this guy could be it pick one player could be traded before the deadline. Oh man. Um, I could see Dubois being traded. Yeah, that's the guy. <laughs> um, I think that's kind of a big thing. Like he's also kind of playing away like for a new contract. Uh, and then don't be surprised to see uh, maybe Wheeler or even Shifley yes for their, mm-hmm. their ways out either. So I think yeah. that's kind of, yeah. kind of, kind of those three are kind of uh, the likely candidates. We big trades too for all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. That's the thing is they could get a lot 
a lot in the upcoming drafts. And we've talked numerous times about how this upcoming draft is uh, pretty big. So if they, if they're not yeah. making the playoffs <laughs> and they can unload one or all three of those guys uh, and get some first round or second round picks in this upcoming draft, that's uh that's going to be hard to pass up. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Maddie, you get the one bold <laughs> prediction or hot take for the 2022, 23 season. Oh, I'm going to go back to Ehlers here. And I'm going to say Ehlers is scoring 45 goals. Ooh, I like it. I, I really am thinking he's, he's going to be, you're, he's gonna you're be. big on the eels this, this, uh, yeah, yeah. This year. <laughs> All right. Uh, big question. Where will they finish in the standings? Will they make the playoffs? Uh, I think, I think they're going to finish fourth in the central. And I think they'll make one of the wild cards, but, but I would not be surprised if they finished fifth in the central and missed the wild card either. Yeah. I think they're going to be right there in that borderline. I, because there's so many tough teams in this, in this conference too. So um, they'll be right there. I, it could be going either way, I think. Yeah. So, I mean, I think they'll be in that wild card spot too, but uh, I'm giving to them the benefit goes. of the doubt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it'll all depend on how bonus kind of gets the, the system going. Cause I think hey. that's to be the big key because if Hellebuck has to face those high danger chances all the time again, I don't yeah. think they're, they're making it. So. No, no, not at all. <laughs> No way. All right. Well, that's uh, the Winnipeg Jets. Uh, it's going to be interesting. There's a few really big storylines we'll be tracking throughout the season and uh, on the podcast. I'm sure we'll be talking about it a lot um, as it goes. So we'll just have to see if it all kind of uh, what happens with it all. And uh, if they're around the playoff bubble, if they're going to trade Dubois because he's on that one year left and he says he may not want to resign. So, yeah, well, that's going to be an interesting one to watch. All right, well, before we uh, end the episode, we're going to do our articles of the day like we always do on the show. And uh, we're going to try to pick one from our our hockey writers team of the Winnipeg Jets. And uh, kind of, you know, they've done a lot of great work over there uh, throughout the pre- preseason and, and the offseason. So, um, Kyle, you have a, an article of the day from the Jets writing team. I do. Uh, I just came out today as we're recording uh so september 27th and this article is by keith forsyth and it's titled jets shifley under more pressure after wheeler's wheeler's demotion and we just talked about this quite a bit uh and which is why i'm bringing it up because it is (laughs) very 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 much the topic du jour of the winnipeg jets this season so uh you know shifley needs to step up with uh wheeler's demotion Um, They both have a lot to prove both on and off the ice, probably more importantly off the ice this season in the locker room. Uh, So I figured that would be the perfect article of the day for our Jets team. Go. Well, I'm going to highlight one by Connor Harabchuk. Harabchuk, uh, And this is the three Jets players to watch in the upcoming preseason games, which is very uh, topical right now. We got the preseason (laughs) going. Uh, you know, a couple games in for some teams, which one or maybe just one for some. Uh, and he does a great job of the three really, you know, interesting players to kind of talk about. Uh, David Gustafson, who's uh, been kind of up and down. Uh, he was good in one season and he'd probably be on a fourth line role, but uh, without cop and guys like that. And it's going to be interesting to see how he does. And uh, Chaz Lucius is another one that he put on and, uh, he's a guy that was just uh, drafted as well and yeah. uh, part of their prospect pool. So um, again, he's probably not going to surprise to make the lineup, but it's going to be fun to watch him in the preseason because he's a really exciting player. So take a look at that article. He goes through great, great um, goes through these players and talks a bit about them, what you want to watch uh, for during the preseason. So check that out uh, as the preseason goes um, by Connor. I, I think if you were to tune in to this show next year, uh, talking about the Winnipeg Jets, Chaz Lucius will be that potential uh, yeah. rookie that could surprise and make the roster out of training camp. So I think he's a year away, maybe two, uh, but you never know. There you go. So, yeah. And again, the Jets have some good young players coming up now too. And, and uh, you know, 
So there's going to have to be a point where those big guys are going to have to go move on. And some of these guys are going to have to take over. So um, it's going to be interesting to track their prospects for those next few years too, depending on what yeah. they kind of decide to do, if they're going to rebuild or not. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Well, that's Winnipeg Jets and uh, thanks Kyle and for John, discussing it as always uh, joining on the podcast and uh, we'll have another one coming up soon. Make sure you're checking out all the, all the writing that uh, the Winnipeg Jets writing team does over at the hockey writers. Like I said, they, they cover the preseason. They've covered quite a bit of, they've got a few really good writers that, uh, yeah. that do a lot of great work. Declan Schroeder, who's the veteran uh, writer over there. He does a lot of stuff uh, for them and um, make sure you're checking all that out as the preseason go continues and the regular season starts and um, make sure you're checking out morning skate newsletter, morningskate.io. That one's going back to five days a week. Uh, once the regular season starts and uh, lots of fun stuff is going to be had uh, throughout that as well. So make sure checking all that out and uh, follow us on Twitter, uh, TikTok, and all the social media stuff we've got on Facebook as well. And uh, we'll see you next time on another season preview show, the hockey writers podcast.